Hello and welcome everyone, this is Kalabovich coming to you with another episode of Underlords Postmortem, a video series in which I extensively comment on uh, some of my pre-recorded games of Dota Underlords. Now you're in for a treat today, but well, let's just get started with our warm-up. And here we can see uh, the first market consisting of two tinies, and lately I have usually been uh, keeping uh, the market with me when I get even a, just a two pair of a good unit like uh, Tiny is, uh, so that after the, this fast round is over, we can buy the second Tiny and another unit, try to get as many two stars as fast as possible for us to, to just win as fast as possible to start on a win streak. Um, as for the items uh, in round one, you usually want to get Embarrassment of Riches or Chainmail or Gloves, usually something like that. With those out of the way, I think Vitality Booster is probably better than the remaining two, and that is also what I'm going for. I mean, it is not a great item, uh, but, well, we gotta work with what we have. Uh, just taking a browse at what other players are going for, getting Tony is very tiny, obviously, but, well, everyone knows his name is really Tony, not Tiny. Tiny is just a nickname. Getting the Bounty Hunter as well. Scrappies have not seemed to be doing well for me lately after all those patches. Uh, uh, I have seen a lot of players going 6 Scrappy and 4 Inventors late in the game, and if they are uncontested they can surely win with, that, with those chain reactions, etc, etc. Uh, they need to, get, to go for Aces for sure, that is for sure. You have your Gyrocopter, you have your Tinker. But let, let's, fo let's focus on this game uh, for now. And the second one is Chainmail, that's what we're getting right now. Now the first question is, are we going to get a pair, finally? Or are we going to, to have to just buy three other tier 1 units and try to, to go to 2 stars? There is a Morphling, there is a Razor, those are some good options. I could also go for Tusk and Pudge and just go for the uh, Warrior route. So getting these here, getting armor here, getting this one out, getting health on one of those, and let's gear up. I mean, th these rounds uh, do not uh, count as much for for your future wins, and you usually just, just win here. Also, I'm just getting Razor for that uh, Primordial bonus to have at least that guaranteed in round 5, after we uh, cap up our level to 4. Um, yes, uh, now it will... As usual, hmm, summoning stone. Now, given that I have two primordials and a uh, savage already, I could, in theory, go for some and go for some summons. That is a fact. And summoning stones, if you can uh, go uh, for it a bit more, is usually a good thing. Buying a couple more units that are generally good in the early game, even on one star. Uh, and yes, getting Tiny a bit better health-wise. Next unit I probably place is going to be Razor, uh, there in the middle of those warriors. Pudge is in front to get all the aggro from the opposition, because he's just a sponge, he doesn't deal a lot of damage. Uh, so yeah, that's what probably is going to happen, Ogre Magi uh, smacking at that Pudge, the other ones as well. While Ogre Magi is being killed, uh, yeah. That is what is going on for sure. Lena with her ult, uh, Puck with the ult, but I mean, to start tiny on round four is almost everything you need to win your round four. Oh, the opponent also has a tiny two star. Uh, now we're gonna place that Razor, that is almost for certain. I see two uh, target bodies here, and target bodies are really one of the, also the easier ways of winning round four of starting yourself on the win streak. I am thinking of selling everyone. Oh, it seems I went for savages instead of primordials. That is slightly strange, peculiar. Uh, I mean, I went for savages because if you go for druids, druids have a lot of summons. They have a summon on uh, on tier two on your uh, uh, nature's prophet and on tier four on your uh, on the best of druid, obviously on the what was he called? Uh, Lone Druid, yes, Lone Druid. And the funniest thing is, Lone Druid does not like to be alone. <laughs> okay, we are killing at least that one, so we are receiving just one damage. I mean, that Bloodseeker will just kill itself. 
Uh, so just one damage, uh, but fortunately that is not a lot and we do get a free reroll, which leave, leads us closer to getting that next two star. Yes, uh, those are some tier three units. That is a fact. I think I could go for a sniper and a timber saw right now uh, to get those scrappies here or just to redraw. Lycan is a very good addition instead of the Enchantress. Yes, I'm getting rid of those to put Lycan into play already. I mean, Lycan uh, is also a great savage summon source. He has the great savage summon source. And afterwards, I think I should just buy at least her, but usually just buy everything and be quick to sell everything as well. If you are, if you have played this game long enough and you know your basic actions uh, like the back of your hand, yes, most people don't know the back of their hand uh, from old Mythbusters episode. Anyway, uh, if, if you know this game like the back of your hand, uh, you, you should be good for, um, for quickly deciding on what to keep, what to trash, etc, etc. This is another small loss, uh, fortunately just a small one, uh, getting dealt two damage, but we do get another free reroll. Uh, so yes, when you when you know everything, when you know all the basic compositions in in early game, in the mid game, in the late game, it's easier for you to just sell everything later on. Uh, Pudge is a good sponge, is a better sponge than Juggernaut, that's for sure. I can't get up to 20 gold rights now. Yeah, I'm just checking, he's only got 600 health, so never mind, Pudge has a thousand. Uh, so, uh, getting that Morphling for that uh, Primordial bonus, and not putting him in play, getting another Tiny, getting Slardar for some future Warriors as well. Um, late game Warriors have a small benefit when you're running Slardar and Tidehunter and something else, then you have both your Warrior 3 or Warrior 6 and your Scaled bonus to uh, protect you from all that magic damage. But right now, as you can see, just running through this opposition here, I mean, I could buy Phantom Assassin and Beastmaster, and that's what I'm doing, just keeping the bench full. Uh, once again, if you are, if you know what you're doing, this is the best strategy early on, because blacklisting does not seem to be working that well for me, or I Add, or maybe I do not know how to use it well. Uh, given that I can't play, put Morphling into play right now, I'm just opting to sell it to get up to 21 gold to get higher interest. And that's what you should be doing. You should always aim to get uh, up to 50 gold by round 12 or 13 at the latest. Uh, well, and even if not 50, then at least 40 by round, uh, by round 13. So you get your econ economy going, you have all the tools necessary for you to win late in the game. Because, I mean, you're not gonna fall off the ladder before round 20, so you know you should be good early game, you just have to, even from round 1, you should start focusing on your late game. From round 1, by just building up a good composition to start you on a win streak. You can't always start on a win streak, obviously, uh, but hey, one has to always try. Getting that Enchantress just for the savage, for another savage bonus, honestly, rather than that, yeah, let's get another one of these. In theory, I could sell the whole bench, get up to 30 gold, but I think I would rather keep my uh, second pair of uh, tinies and a pair of Enchantresses if I am uh, able to get some druids for my summoning stone. But even without that, just having two one-star lichens and that summoning stone uh, should be working quite good for those. Not one, not two, but four wolves. Uh, here we have some uh, blood users, uh, some blood bounds with a two-star ogre magic that is right now their carry, probably. And as you can see, target buddy does what target buddy usually does, and that is just yeah, be, being uh, being the target while the opposition is killing us. And even though Tiny uh, kicked that Ogre Magi up, he was still uh, targeting the body. And that is why this is one of the better tier 2, generic tier 2 uh, items and or contraptions for the early game. If you can just, everybody usually places all their stuff in the middle, so if you just place your target body in the middle, usually everything, everyone just goes for it. Uh, right now I think I'm, I should also buy this Razor and put him in the middle uh, instead of one of the Lycans. Uh, I am also just splurging on everything else. 
remember you do not have to use up your free rerolls if you know you are not losing this round uh, set a round um, and this obviously counts for all the loot rounds and round 10 is usually usually one of the usually you, you just can't lose it also if you happen if you manage to lose round 10 that means there's something seriously wrong with your composition is there something seriously wrong with my composition hopefully not no there is not <laughs> at least not not that i can see right now okay so i have three warriors for the front i have two primordials uh, for some additional summoned eidolons for some additional damage and two savages for some additional damage as well round 10 is usually the latest where you should get a smuggler the best usage of smuggler uh, in my opinion is winning round 20 and getting a friends and family discount on round 20 that's a tier 4 global item that uh, makes all the units in the store cheaper by one because usually you are re-rolling you are rolling down uh, after round 25 so you have uh, if you have smuggler then you have round 20 and round 25 for a chance to get that uh, uh, for a chance to get uh, that uh, item uh, if not you just have round 25 for that and that is uh, after round 25 that usually does not matter unless you have a good economy and uh, you want to roll down and you are on your road to getting your three stars now getting for a moment back to this game i was at 38 gold i thought to myself no i'm not selling off my pair of enchantresses i'm not selling a tiny if i'm getting the sixth one so i just stayed at three interest right now we are getting to 40 out uh, gold and also i'm thinking about having another uh what unit what other unit i should be having there and given that i have two two star tinies and they are really the carry uh in the early and in the mid game uh, yeah, having two tinies is not a problem, especially that the fifth unit is not adding a lot to my composition. I even opted to get a second to start tiny over a second lichen without any items. I think that is a decent choice, even despite me having that summoning stone. Also, why can't I get a third lichen? That is also a question I'm asking you. Okay, uh, this is round 12. We are starting to... Uh, we have to start thinking about which co co which endgame compositions we want to go for. Uh, so if uh, I get uh, the scoreboard up and running, I have to pause for a moment to sum up, sum, to sum up what people are currently going for. And as you might see, I am looking at the scoreboard quite often during the game, as you should be. Um, Yes, managing your money, managing your bench is good. Then also obviously looking at the opposition of what they're going for, what they're doing. As you can, and as you can see, 51 gold by round 13. That is usually the uh, lowest economy goal that you should be going for. Uh, I have three worth of sell, uh, sellable units right here. I opted to go for uh, two warlocks here and go one lower on... Uh, on my interest uh, I leveled up for five gold because I want to start winning uh, you know I mean I won the previous round uh, but I want to start winning I don't want to go lower on health anymore uh, so right now hopefully all those plague wards from the Venomancer will help remember they are also savages so I, so they are dealing delayed damage and yes fortunately I managed to win and it was thanks to that last uh, unit as well. Also right now I am up to four savages. I have a potential pair of uh, lichens, of enchantresses, of uh, venomancers, but I'm not getting anything from the store, unfortunately. So I'm just getting a witch doctor once again. If I want to go for warlocks, that is a very good uh, early warlock. That one, aside from venomancer, are the ones you, you are looking for. Okay. Let me just pause for a moment to catch my breath. Whew. Okay, and let's get back to the fray. Three hunters, two heartless, and a demon. Add that, two, two star. Okay, and let's pause here for a moment. Uh, let me see what people are going for. Okay, so here we see uh, two people are going for assassins. Uh, two people are going for knights. One is going for scrappies. One is going for mages. 
one is going for warriors aside from me of course and that is about it this means that uh, people are not really going for elusives and from all the compositions yeah that's about it no one is going for elusives right now one for hunters yeah sure that's the one we are fighting against also just checking which units are open uh, which are contested etc etc because yeah that is how you know where you should go for your two stars unfortunately this is a loss but i mean the opponent had a lot of quality two star units uh, from what i have seen and from what i have heard hunters do not seem to be doing that well late in the game but hunters seem to be a decent mid-game formation just remember to veer away from them if you are uh, at any point contested another enchantress that is good i could also start going for this little fella instead of uh, instead of venomancer or instead of lycan yes this one instead of venomancer i mean one and the other are uh, are summoning us some units this is also the money round i am not uh, switching positions because i usually keep forgetting about it but if you have a half decent composition that should not really be the matter uh, you should still be winning even if you do not invert your composition here for all those assassin dogs ponies dogs beasts well, you know, that was Houndies. Uh, so yeah, as you can see, at least uh, that is also a test of the composition, if you can win without inverting your order. Anyway, uh, three warriors still, three savages, uh, two druids, both of them being two stars. Between all these, Dawning of Ristol is not something I usually want to go for, unless the lobby is already heavy of some, uh, uh, of some warlocks and maybe some scrappies as well. I just went for skull basher. That is generally just a good uh, item to have and to hold uh, Right now I'm opting to sell a couple of things to to get my pairs. I'm also thinking of buying tight hunter and buying tiny uh, And given that I have three savages No, I'm actually yeah. Yeah, Pudge is on the outs. It is round 16. I did not see a second copy of Pudge until now, and honestly, Tide Hunter also has a thousand, uh, a thousand health. So that is the same role, but with much more damage and a much better stun ability. And I think he's going to stay there up front for the remainder remainder of uh, of the match. Oops! Spoiler alert. <clears throat> okay. Right now we're getting murderized by that big old ogre and a two-star bloodbound uh, queen of pain. Yeah, so that's what's happening. I'm I'm going for tiny number seven, trying to get that three-star. Uh, over is extending for a moment, but that should not care. We are getting another morphling. Finally, I have fi finally not finally finally i have two primordials that is a tide hunter that i want to purchase and that is a kunkka i'm thinking to purchase as well uh, getting that fr that free redraw right now because i just leveled up so it's going to take a moment before we level up once again also thinking yeah and uh, getting kunkka instead of that tusk because that tusk honestly does not give us anything composition wise Having a uh, one star tier four unit is usually better than having a two star tier one unit. There are exceptions, obviously, but that one didn't give us anything for uh, for the alliances. It was the third uh, savage unit, and savages also don't uh, don't go that well mid into mid game into late game. Also, it gave us a second human if we want to to go for some silences, but that is just a fringe case here. Uh, yeah, okay, so we are losing yet again. We are losing yet again. I think I will be getting rid of that task quite soon as well. And let's see, I would like to get finally a third Lycan. A third uh, Tide Hunter would be good. A third Nature's Prophet would be good. Let's get that free reroll in here. I'm thinking of getting Sand King here as well. It is a Savage. It is an Assassin. We have some Savages. We have some Assassins. So those are some synergies I could be going for. I'm thinking of whether to go for any of those Assassins or just to, to stay here and redraw. And yeah, I'm thinking of getting those Trinity Protectors instead of my Nature's Prophets. Nature's Prophet Prophets are not the greatest units, even if you have a Summoning Stone. And Trinity Protector is a great friend frontliner and uh, yeah also good damage dealing great healing great self-healing as you can see here 
so yeah, hopefully this is going to go better for us. We do have some quality crowd control with a two star Tiny, with a one star Kunkka and with a one star uh, Tight Hunter with, uh, with a potential Sand King. This means that it would be perfect if we got an Enigma and uh, Arc Warden to get those primal primordial synergies, to get that uh, a summoning stone going and there is an arc warden here for us as well arc warden is a very interesting unit because it fits in most of the combinations right now and i'm opting to go for that instead of my uh instead of my two star morphling uh i'm not anywhere near getting an assassin bonus and this one is literally quite quite good I'm also thinking of getting Doom from, for my frontline from, for my warriors, but in this composition I don't think I will go up to 6 warriors. And uh, Tiny is good for the Primordials, uh, Tide Hunter is good for the Scales obviously and for the stun, and Kunkka is also quite good for the stun and is a human uh, right there with Lycan. Now, the question is, no, 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 I'll probably not make it through this knight composition. I have not killed enough of those knights to get their armor, bo bonus armor effects off of them. That is quite unfortunate, but hey, I'm still at 66 health, uh, minus 10. <laughs> okay, still above 50 by round 20, so that should be good. And barely above 50, but at least above 50. If you're below 50 yeah, by round 20, then yeah, there is... Uh, there's something wrong going and you should start thinking about what you're doing with your game. Fortunately, I have managed to amass enough money to get up to uh, level 8 uh, after this round. I could go and I should go for that tree and protector 2 star. No, I opted to, to not go for it and go for more savages and probably go for assassins. And I remember this is the moment where I slightly miscalculated because I thought I already had three assassins here in this composition. So my bad. I mean, Lycan should really not be there. Instead of Lycan, I should probably have a uh, phantom assassin or something like that. Uh, at least a third assassin. Uh... Okay, managed to get through that round quite uh, easily. Now, can I get a friends and family discount or just get a head start on a really good tier four unit? No, we have a Maelstrom. That is one of the better units to give an Arc Warden because you have not one, but two of those. Uh, the question is, who am I giving this uh, Skull Basher to? You usually should go for a unit with high attack speed or multi-speed, obviously. Another Tide Hunter, yes, that is great. Uh, another Phantom Assassin, that is also great. I'm thinking of getting that Templar Assassin as well and putting it on the board uh, and getting that uh, three Assassin synergy going uh, to start dealing some damage. I mean, we do have some tanks in front with Kunk, uh, sorry, with Kunkka 1, maybe not, but with Tide Hunter 2 with three Warriors and Chainmail, yeah, that, that should hold the line for a lot, for a long time now. Honestly, I am not 100% sure what composition I should be going for for the end game right now. And let's look through the other compositions. So up front, we have a couple of Bloodbounds with some Scales and Hunters. So generally just a Bloodbound multiple sacrifice unit composition with two two, two star Ogre Magis, a Sacrificial Warlock, a Queen of Pain wielding a big time contract, etc. In second place, we have Scrappies with a lot of other synergies, being Assassins, Dead Eyes, Hunters, etc. Third place, six Hunter. Fourth place, six Knights. Last place, four Knights. Uh, seventh place, uh, six uh, Mages. And sixth place, uh, the good old Warrior Warlock combination that I have heard a lot of good things about lately. Okay. Uh, and I am going for three warriors, two savages, uh, three assassins, two primordials, and two humans. Uh, so honestly, I literally have, it seems like I have a, no idea wh what I'm going for. I know I want to have warriors for my front. I, I know I want to get Enigma uh, to, uh, for all my stuns to be worth a lot more. Because when you have Enigma, its ace ability says that if a, uh, an enemy unit is stunned or silenced or hexed, uh, they, uh, their magic gain decreases instead of increasing. I'm also thinking of selling this uh, Templar and getting a Morphling back. And remember, I sold a 2-star Morphling. That's, that was not the greatest 
uh, thing I could have done back then. I also should get rid of both Venomancers by now. Because uh, it's not looking like they're gonna have any synergies in this composition right now. There is a lone druid here finally, but I have gotten rid of all the other druids. Uh, just taking once again look through the rest of the field and we see there is an Arc Warden 2 star out there already but I mean that is such a good unit on its own and if you get that and Enigma going that is just uh, cl close to perfection yeah close to perfection especially if you have at least any uh, stun or silence effects like I don't know Disruptor, Tidehunter, Kunkka uh, even tiny, even tiny stunts for a moment, and we are one tiny away from a three star. Okie doke. Uh, round 24 is going to be upon us. Sorry, round 23 is going to be upon us. Uh, right now I'm slightly rolling down. I should have sold. No, I can't sell anything right now. I'm just rolling down and getting a two star Kunkka. That is great. If I had a free space on the bench, I should have also bought a shaman, uh, the uh, the tier one. Uh, how's he called the tier one troll shaman? Because he is a shaman, shadow shaman. Yes, thank you, thank you, Caleb. Don't worry, Caleb. Uh, Shadow Shaman, because if you overflow the board between rounds and you have two shamans, you have a 15% higher chance of when you get an ace, you get the a you get the shaman ace that is Enigma, and that is the unit I am looking for. There's also another Sand King here, Sand King and Lycan. Oh my goodness, I have had those two one-star Lycans from the from almost the beginning of the game, and I can't seem to get another one. That is that is unfortunate. That uh, that summoning stone is not getting used as well as I hoped it would be. And yes, by round 24 we get a 3-star Tiny, that is great, a 2-star Morphling. So we just need a, a Sand King, and we need 2 Arc Wardens and a Lycan, and we can get and we can 2-star plus our whole composition. Uh, but that is not to be, I am down to 41 gold, that is not the place also I want to be, I should be still hanging ar around 50 or above 50, but I seem to be losing uh, some ground health-wise in, uh, in this match, so that is why I went up there, uh, sorry, down there rather, and re-rolled a bit, and you could have seen here uh, tight hunter stun into Kunkka stun and then we can start dealing some damage and uh, you can also see the dark blue uh, on Arc Warden's damage on his damage bar that is that dark blue is item damage and that is exactly the maelstrom or rather two maelstrom he is wielding okie doke uh, there is an another phantom assassin but I think I should keep it here the question is am I going for level 9 uh, after this money round or not. Uh, if I get uh, an Enigma, that would be perfect because that's my fourth Primordial and that's my second Shaman. So honestly, I'm thinking of going up to level 9 after this round and getting at least one uh, at least one Enigma because uh, from level 8 to level 9 it ups your percentage chance of getting an ace unit from 1 to 3 so that is plus 300% of chance of you getting uh, of me getting that Enigma of you getting that uh, unit okay so good good happen good things are happening here that is for sure uh, and we are right now in fifth place with 47 health that is not the worst place to be uh, we are looking for three-starring that uh, Phantom Assassin, that is for sure. That Tide Hunter is very much sellable. It is quite hard to get a uh, to get a fourth tier unit up to three stars while it's at least a bit contested. And well, you you need to have a ton of gold for that as well. I mean, you need 36 gold for that. Moonshard, one of the better items here you could get. And I should be putting that on Phantom Assassin, yes. And given that I don't have Enigma yet, uh, I opted to uh, to get the Phantom Assassin out there on the board right now. And I was thinking about rolling... Oh, finally, three two-star like, and that is great. I also should buy Slark here, honestly, uh, for and 
get a two-star Slark, exchange it for one of those uh, Phantom Assassins to get the primordial, sorry, to get the scaled bonus going. But honestly, the unit I am looking for right now is Enigma, and if I get an Enigma, this should be smooth sailing till uh, till the re for the rest of the match. That is for sure, uh, because stunning and uh, powering down, stunning and powering down. Yeah, they are they are winning. Units uh, this late in the game are usually winning due to their abilities, due to getting their mana bars filled. That is for sure. Uh, winning against the number one opponent is very promising. That is also certain. And what are we getting here? Can we finally get that Enigma going? That is the question. Uh, no, it is not yet to be. Now, am I keeping it at 29? I mean, this composition is quite good. I mean, I do need one Sand King and two, uh, and two Arc Wardens for this composition to be even better. Uh, but that's what I'm looking for right now. One Sand King, two Arc Wardens, three uh, Phantom Assassins and an Enigma. Or three. And if I can get a Shadow Shaman going and start overflowing the board uh, to try and uh, make my chance of getting the Enigma higher, that would also be perfect. Now, can we win? That was... <laughs> That was a stun and another stun and their stun and this is my stun and this is another stun. This was a very stunning round, that is for sure. And that is quite fortunate as well because I was at 29 gold, so that is plus 3 interest for me. Right now I want to go up on the money track as well, once again. I opted to go for that Konka, but I'm probably not getting him to 3 star anytime soon. Techies and Disruptor, but no Enigma. That is unfortunate. I should, uh, I could blacklist those, obviously, or I should just could just not do that if I wanted to reroll and, and blacklist some uh, some aces as well. Uh, but I'm still just achievement hunting for that to get a thousand t uh, tier five slash eight units ace unit achievement. Buying Arcordon for sure, buying that Kunkai yet again, but that Kunkai is once again quite sellable. And hoping to win yet again to get four interests instead of three interests. This is where where they have another Tide Hunter. Fortunately, just one star, but they do have a Kunkka. Uh, but as you can see, we are just stunning them into stunning them into stunning them. This is a very stunning composition indeed. Also. One person, yeah, one person is out already. No, two people are, are, are out already. So we are starting the late game right now, preparing for around for the next round, getting that Shadow Shaman overflowing him on the board so that my rerolls net me an Enigma with a slightly higher probability. Just getting down to 40 gold, still want to, uh, still want to uh, try and accumulate some more money. And once again, let's look at the composition. So, first place, we have six Scrappies, four Inventors, two Dead Eyes, three Hunters, two uh, Heartless. That is a very interesting thing. And Heartless is from... Uh, what's the other one? Uh, what's the second Heartless from? One is... Oh, Drow Ranger, that's for Hunter and Heartless. Uh, Bloodseeker is for Heartless and Dead Eye. Uh, sniper is for uh, Hunter and Deadeye and Scrappy, and uh, Medusa is for Hunter. So yeah, I think they have their game plan figured out. In play in third and sixth place, we have some knights. One of them with uh, Summoning Stone, the other with Fall from Grace. And it's a wonder that the Fall from Grace composition is actually lower. We also have another six Hunter and another uh, Warrior Warlock. So. No one is going for assassins any longer. Uh, and no one still seems to be going for elusives. That is quite interesting indeed. Okay, so yeah, one last opponent before we get to the money round. This time it's knights and the question is, can we stun them for long enough for us to kill them and for them not to regain their health any longer? Probably not. Or am I? That is the ship, that is uh, some Arc Wardens, but yeah, I think 
I think this won't be enough given that they have a 3 star Luna with what looks like mask or just a good attack weapon. So that was an unfortunate loss. Now I just need to start overflowing the Shadow Shaman once again to try and get that Enigma to get uh, both Primordial 4 and uh, and the other bonus. Yes, I'm just selling Kunkka now. It is money-wise easier to get Lycan to 3 stars uh, than Kunkka to 3 stars, both money-wise and, uh, and composition-wise. And this is looking like the perfect shop for me as well. No one seems to be going for Phantom Assassin because no one's going for Elusives and no one is going for Assassins anymore. Big Dinos, big rewards and yes, the perfect store gives us a 2-star Sand King and a 2-star Arc Warden in a moment. And if we can stun those Dinos long enough and often en enough that they don't heal, yeah, this is going to be a very quick round. Also, buying Selling Disruptor for the achievement. Uh, I'm not really thinking of going for level 10, although that might be the case in the near, near or far future. But once again, right now, all I need is an Enigma instead of my uh, second Phantom Assassin, and I should be quite good here. Between Black King Bar, I mean, there was a mage player, but I would rather have Pipe of Insight for that one. Uh, I'm going for a for some more damage with the uh, Battle Fury on Lycan. And right now I need to start rolling lower for Enigma once again. Getting another Arc Warden Troll Warlord, that would be interesting, but I'm not uh, for into Warlocks, that is unfortunate. Not going for another Shadow Shaman, getting another Kunkka in here. What else can we get? Yeah, the... Um, it is ending... It is ending, yes, once it goes down to 8, 7, 6, 5 seconds, you should just be thinking about uh, building your... Uh, getting your uh, end composition onto the board. Oh yes, uh, so yeah, we are winning this uh, round quite easily. Fortunately. Oh, what else can we get? I rolled it down to 20 gold. I mean, those are some Kunkas that probably should go out unless I get to two star a Kunka onto the board and th three star a Phantom Assassin. That could also happen. But those Kunkas and Arc Warden, if I fail to find an Enigma, that is also a slot that can just go onto the board instead of those, uh, instead of the second Phantom Assassin, especially if I get three more Phantom Assassins. Right now, overflowing that, trying to up my chance for getting an ace. That is a Phantom Assassin. That is another Lycan. That is a Medusa I'm thinking about. But thinking about that Medusa just cost me a lot of time, unfortunately. Rolling down another Medusa for the achievement. Another Troll Warlord for the achievement. Rolling down once again. Just an Arc Warden that I'm going to bench. I could also try and sell uh, Shadow Shaman and both Kunkas right now. Because I think two 2-star Arc Wardens are much better than two 2-star two Kunkas on the board. Uh, sometimes even two 2-star two Arc Wardens are better than one 3-star uh, Arc Warden. Uh, winning here? Question mark. I don't see the board. Hello? Yes, winning. Winning, fortunately, against some Brawnies. At least I saw Brawny there. At least one of them was represented on the on the field. Uh, trying to get that ace once again, but I am low, down to around 10 gold. That is very unfortunate. And I still didn't see even one enigma. Maybe now? Maybe now is my chance. Another troll warlord. Unfortunately. Yeah, I'm just opting to sell those kunkas and roll a bit lower. Getting that phantom assassin. Now that I have eight phantom assassins, I'm just yeah, uh, going lower here, selling uh, selling my out, getting a second 2-star Lycan on the board instead of the uh, Phantom Assassin I managed to 3-star. The only problem is uh, the Phantom Assassin got the wrong item. Uh, fortunately, yeah, that's just for one round. Someone got a Tombstone. Yeah, I've heard a lot of comments that uh, comments that Tombstone is just pretty ridiculous, ridiculously broken these days. Uh, I still can't seem to find a good way to play that, unfortunately. The question is, can we kill those? Probably not. Probably not. That three-star Luna is carrying them so much. Oh my goodness. 
another player out so we are down to five and I am down to 26 gold and my economy is busto and we are closing to uh, we are closing to another uh, loot round gyrocopter once again not the one I'm looking for free reroll and still no enigmas oh my goodness uh, that is a stunning display of no enigmas yeah changing it from here to here getting this one here uh, I mean Lycan has a high attack speed especially after he morphs into his wolf form that is why I'm giving those weapons to him as for Phantom Assassin uh, if he gets a crit I mean if he has a higher attack speed means he's doing more attacks so he has a higher chance of higher chance of getting that uh, critical he has it at 30 or 45 percent right now and yeah those crits are where this damage is coming from that those and those arc wardens as well but it seems the opponent has better arc wardens and i'm just losing a ton of health here it looks like uh, something along the lines of 16 or 18 16 down to 10 health so it's uh, do or die right now for me Hopefully I can find that enigma, remember if I do have that uh, piece on the board each time uh, an enemy unit is silenced, stunned or otherwise jebated, uh, they are losing mana instead of gaining mana. So yeah, that is happening. I have this round, I am keeping that 10 gold to get at least another one. Uh, to get a 3-star Lycan maybe and a 2-star Arc Warden onto the board or get that Enigma finally start winning. I mean, we are down to 5 players and aside from the player in the first place, uh, we should be... Uh, I mean, each, uh, <laughs> each round can be the person's last. Just needs to win against this Dragon here, but I should do that handily with so many stunts. Honestly, I think stuns uh, is stunning is the best way of getting through your neutral rounds. Okie dokie. Now, this is do or die here, guys. This is do or die. Can we get that enigma? Can it carry us? That is a tombstone, but it is also a refresher orb. And if we can get that onto our tide hunter, and if we can get that enigma as well, this should go on tiny, sure, because it's also kind of upfront. If we can't get that going, that we're just gonna depower the opponent's units by a lot. And no, and no, and no, and no, and still no, and I'm selling those Arc Wardens just to roll yet again. And no, no, I'm not getting anywhere. I rolled down this far because I could have sold, I mean, I could have re-rolled once again down to one, selling Lycan, selling, uh, selling Shadow Shaman, and then I would be at, uh, I, I would be at exactly five if I managed to get that last piece, that enigma. Okay, can we win against those scrappies? If they can get their chain reactions going, there, pr then probably not. But let's see, let's take a gander here. No, 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 I'm losing this one by far. They have managed to three star most of their uh, composition. That is nine and four, that is 13 and I'm out. I'm out in fifth place, yeah. Not getting that enigma was was really my bane here. I mean, also, some of the units I was going for were contested. As you can see from this composition, I got two two-star Lycans. Uh, this is not the best end composition. This is just some pieces I was given, honestly. I had some synergies, but these were not the greatest synergies. I mean, I had some damage dealers. I had some frontliners. Uh, in theory, I had a lot of things going for me. In my opinion, I was just missing that ace, and also some of the opponents were going uncontested while I was going co contested for the longest of times, for example, for that Lycan. Uh, as you can see, the first five places, there are two two-star Arc Wardens in the second guy's uh, composition. Uh, as far as Lycans go, I remember another player had a two-star Lycan and another two-star Lycan on the bench. So yeah, those were heavily contested. I was also not uh, uh, using my economy at the fullest, unfortunately. Uh, I should have sold my bench, uh, sold stuff off my bench more often. I shouldn't be keeping most of those tier four units once I get them to two-star. 
Only if they're not contested and my economy is perfect should I be going for three stars then. Also, if I don't have any other plans for uh, for the other uh, for the other things. And as you can see, the end top four we have one knight, we have one scrappies, we have one warrior warlock, and we have one just a lot of three stars composition. Okay, that is going to be it for this match. I hope uh, it was uh, the playthrough and the commentary was interesting for you. I hope you learned a lot. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, remember, leave a comment and give Team Rankstar a subscription here on YouTube. You can also find me on my Twitch channel, Mondays through Fridays, uh, 9 a.m. till 3 p.m. Central European Standard Time, doing some Eternal card game first, and then in the second half of the stream, usually going for some Dota Underlords. Still, unfortunately, climbing for that Lord. I think I'm just not playing enough or not playing good enough. We'll see. Anyway, thanks for watching. This video has been sponsored by TeamRankStar.com, the best source for your news of digital card games and auto battlers such as uh, Dota Underlords, Teamfight Tactics, uh, Eternal Card Game, Magic the Gathering, Elder Scroll Legends, Mythgard, uh, Gwent, and I'm probably, as usual, missing one. I think I should, should note that down or just record the ending. And by InkedGaming.com, customize your game, your style. This has been Kalebovich, signing off. Have a great day, guys.